make your play. <laughs> the Detectives, Thursday at 8.30 on BBC One. Tough times on BBC Two shortly as our friends in the north sample the sour taste of 1974. Seven on Friday, the peace was shattered. The bomb in London's Docklands marking the end of the IRA ceasefire. After 17 months of an uneasy truce, Panorama, in a special programme, tells the story of how it broke down and asks what chance now of a lasting peace. Panorama. After the news. This is BBC One. There now follows a ministerial broadcast by the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Major, MP. Tonight, I want to talk to you about Northern Ireland. In 1991, I began a new search for peace with the Northern Ireland parties and the Irish government. Three years ago, this month, the IRA sent the government a message. It said, the conflict is over but we need your advice on how to bring it to a close. Last Friday, in Docklands, the IRA exploded a bomb that killed two innocent men and injured dozens. There may be other bombs in the future. Does this mean that three years of unprecedented effort in Northern Ireland have achieved nothing? No, it doesn't. We are going to carry on with that work. There has been dramatic progress in Northern Ireland. Many lives have been saved. People have seen a brighter future. Just seven weeks ago, I met crowds of people who came out on a wet and freezing day in Ballymena, in Belfast, and in Downpatrick. Protestants and Catholics, members of different political parties, united in a hope that we were building a lasting peace. I've found the same hope in Armagh, Strabane, Newry and Londonderry, in Bangor, Lisbon, Larne and throughout Belfast. The IRA may not have moved forward, but Northern Ireland has. And our aim is to bring together all the democratic political parties in Northern Ireland, together to talk. Throughout the past three years, Time and time again, we have said that Sinn Féin and the IRA must accept the same democratic principles as other parties and then demonstrate that they have renounced violence for good. But they have not. They did not accept the democratic principles which the Irish Prime Minister and I set out in the Downing Street Declaration. They did not give a commitment to put away their arms. And that is why all party talks have not yet taken place. But we need to build confidence so they can do so. When Sinn Féin IRA blocked the road to the decommissioning of weapons, we and the Irish government set up an international body under the distinguished American Senator George Mitchell. Even then, Sinn Féin said the IRA would not begin taking its weapons out of commission. Even then, Sinn Féin was no more prepared to accept the principles put forward by Senator Mitchell than they had been prepared to accept those in the Downing Street Declaration. And so we proposed an alternative way for Sinn Féin to show a commitment to democracy through the ballot box. Let me explain this plan. I am not proposing an assembly to run Northern Ireland. My proposal doesn't seek to revive the old Stormont Parliament, and those that have said so are deceiving the people of Northern Ireland. The elected body I propose would exist for a short time only and for one principal purpose, to lead directly to all party negotiations. Sinn Féin and the IRA have a choice. Only when they commit themselves unequivocally to peace and reinstate the ceasefire, can they have a voice and a stake in Northern Ireland's future. But if they reject democratic principles and use violence, they can expect no sympathy and no quarter. We will hunt down the criminals who murdered innocent people last Friday. We will be vigilant against the threat of further attacks. The IRA will never bomb their way to the negotiating table. 
until their violence genuinely ends, British and Irish ministers will not meet Sinn Féin. There's a new spirit in Northern Ireland, a spirit for peace. We will not allow the gains made there to be lost. We shall intensify our work with the democratic parties and with the Irish government. On Friday night, at one minute past seven, the IRA broke their word. They shattered promises made in their name. But I will never weaken my resolve to bring a just and lasting settlement to Northern Ireland. Peace does not have to be a dream. The people of Northern Ireland, the people I have come to know over the past five years, want peace. It is to their voice, above all, that I shall listen. My goal is a lasting peace, and I shall go on working until we have achieved it. That was a ministerial broadcast by the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Major, MP. This is BBC One with the main evening news from Peter Sissons. John Major says the search for peace goes on with an open mind. Elections aren't the only option being considered. But after the London bombing, he said Sinn Féin had to decide whether they were Democrats or an IRA front. In Belfast, thousands demonstrate for peace. In Dublin, the government welcomes Britain's commitment to keep the process alive. And America's Bosnian envoy keeps the Dayton peace agreement from breaking down. Evening. John Major told the House of Commons today that the East London bomb wasn't going to stop him driving ahead with the search for a lasting Northern Ireland peace. But he made it plain that his preferred route, elections to a new peacemaking body, wasn't the only option being considered. To the Irish government and to the nationalist leader John Hume, who pressed him for a peace referendum, he said, Our minds are not closed. But for Sinn Fein, they'd not meet British ministers again until they decided whether they were democratic politicians or a front for the IRA. Our political editor, Robin Oakley, is at Westminster. The Prime Minister had no...